this way and push them that way. If you're thinking about starting a sawmill business, guys, today's video is for you. Come along today as we get the sawmill on a different piece of property than a normal farm, and you watch me struggle bust for at least 20 minutes before we get started. Uh, uh. Hey there, folks. This is Josh Stony Ridge. My hat. <laughs> Hold on. Let's fix this. We got us an issue. <laughs> what in the world? All right, I think we're good now. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm. I am not on the Stony Ridge Farm, obviously. I'm on my neighbor's farm, and it's a beautiful place. We're down here on the Dan River. It's absolutely gorgeous. Guys, look at this river. This is awesome. I have been looking for a piece of property on the river, and one day, maybe I'll grow up and get one. <laughs> well, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna get started and we're gonna show you why I don't do a lot of traveling with my Woodmiser LT40. This is the Woodmiser LT40 and this is my friend Tony's big old pile of logs. <laughs> and it stretches as far as the eye can see. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, about 15 logs right here that need to be milled up. I worked out a deal with my buddy Tony. He bought me some blades and I hooked up the mill and brought it over here. Here's why I don't haul the mill to places off of the farm. I'll show you in a second. And today we're gonna be milling up something awesome. I think we've got some walnut in here somewhere, but mostly we're gonna be milling up a little bit of white oak for my friend Tony to build plant beds just like I have. So come along today as we learn why I don't haul my mill around. We see a beautiful place and we mill up some beautiful lumber. Woo! I ain't afraid of work. I ain't afraid of play. I ain't afraid to get the job done and do it my mm. damn way. I ain't afraid of life. Times like this. If you mess with my freedom, I'll tell you this what you can kiss. Right. Folks, welcome back to the Stony Ridge Farm Channel. It is hot. It is really hot. It is 88 degrees and about 9,000% humidity here in North Carolina. You can see the haze in the sky. It is absolutely miserably hot out there in the sun. We are under some awesome canopy, under the canopy of some beautiful trees here down by the river. Thought this would be a pretty fun spot to take you guys to run the mill. So what we've got going on here, this is the Woodmiser LT40. I'll go ahead and show it to you. We'll get the key and start it up here in a second. I moved the mill and whenever I move the mill, there's always something that gets cattywampus or out of whack. Here's what happened. There's a jack that goes right here and you can see it's not there. There's another jack over here. There's another jack right there. What you have to do when you get to a new place is you have to jack up your mill, stabilize it, and level it as best as you possibly can. Well, I failed to remove that jack or raise it up, and when I took off, I broke the jack off of the sawmill, off the wood miser. That was a bummer, total bummer. So, First thing, first item of business is to take the jack, which is in the back of the Warlock dump truck here, and the Husqvarna battle axe, because we're gonna need that very soon. I say battle axe. This is the Husqvarna power axe. This is a uh, awesome battery powered chainsaw. And we're gonna repair. We're gonna do a little bit of reparation. So I went and I bought what I thought would be the right length and size bolts they're carriage bolts along with a nylon locking washer and we've got our flex tools drill right here and we're going to go ahead i say drill impact right here and we're going to go ahead and get the mill out of the way and see if we can make this simple repair thank goodness it didn't cost me a bunch of money to do, fix this this is probably a eight dollar fix then we're going to change the blades out on the sawmill did i bring the blades <sighs> I forgot to bring the blades. Another reason I don't go and mill anywhere else. I've got to go all the way back home, 15 minutes away and come back. <laughs> so let's jack this thing up and fix the jack that's jacked up, right? This fell off. It was laying right there. I have no idea where that came from, but it's bound to be important. So when we start the mill up, we're going to be listening for anything that might be messed up. Got this here. We're going to hang on to that. Walk on down here, guys. 
now we're all clear of the jack right here. And this is where the jack was. I pulled these out. This is the new carriage bolt, so I'm pretty close. Um, and this is where the jack goes. So we'll get the jack, put it back in place. This thing weighs about 40 pounds. It is a stout little jack here. So we need to raise it up. So we'll pull the pin out. Get one bolt started. Please be right. Oh, it needs to be a quarter inch longer. I gotta go all the way back to tractor supply. Oh, bummer. <laughs> Let me show you. This is our. These are our old carriage bolts that go through. This is the new carriage bolt, and that's a new carriage bolt that's ran through there, and it's just not long enough. There's not enough there to get a bite with our nylon locking washer. So I've got to take these back and get one or four that are just a half inch longer than that. Ugh. That's a five inch bolt. I need a five and a half. Uh, uh. <laughs> Having a sawmill, guys, if you're not used to moving it around, can be a bummer. Oh, boys and girls, did I get lucky. So I just so happened to have <laughs> carriage bolts at my house in my shop, and I cut them down to size. So save me a trip all the way to the tractor supply. That's a haul when you're living out in the country here. So we'll try it, see if she fits. Maybe, come on, baby. Come on, baby. Yeah, oh yeah, that's good stuff. Nice. All right, let's get all four bolts through. And then we'll bolt her up. There you go, buddy. You're getting the learning and the smartens of things now, Josh. <laughs> If you have not heard of flex tools guys these are a beast of a tool you can find them at lowe's flex awesome this is a heavy heavy duty contractor grade tool this is not <laughs> all right so the next thing we got to do is take off our cover on our debarker not a lot of bark on this timber we're going to be cutting but there could be some dirt the debarker goes ahead of the blade to clean the wood and debark it prior to this bandsaw blade going through. So it saves your blade. We've got to change our blade out. I know it was pretty worn last time. So we've got three covers that we have to remove. There we go. That is the cover. Set the cover down over here. Cover one. These need to be lubricated a little bit. I'm slacking on my lubing. This is what I use. This is a Meyer soap container and it's filled with ATF, automatic transmission fluid. That's what they tell you to use for lubrication on the slide and most of the things here on this sawmill. So we'll also use it on this little thing right here. So we'll drop a little bit in there and that way this comes loose a little bit easier next time. Awesome. Always thinking ahead for next time. So here are the inner workings. You have a pulley here and a drive pulley here, and the blade cuts in this direction. So in other words, it pulls that way. So you wanna align your teeth to pull the sawdust that way and pull through the log that way. This moves, and the way it moves is by loosening right here, and then this will slide in. I'll show you. Just like so. Now our blade, is loose enough that we can just pop it right out and we'll slide a new one in tighten that back down and we'll run it for a second then we'll get her up to about 3000 psi and there's a meter right here guys this is good info even if you're hiring someone to come and mill at your place you're getting ready to learn something here old blade off this is our new blade we'll pinch our new blade just like so Slide her in. Okay. 
carefully. Like I said, if you don't have tough hands, you might want to wear gloves on this one. Everything has to line up. So I take my handle on the back of the pulley right here and I make sure that the blade is lined up right with the back of that pulley. Same thing on the other pulley. Snug our blade in place. Make sure we're good. Spinning free. Awesome. Tighten her down. About 3,000 PSI. We'll fire the mill up real quick. Actually, we gotta put our covers back on, our guards in place. Side guard. Good. Next, I'll fire the mill up. Raise it up a little bit. Engage our blade. Here we go. We disengage our blade. And we'll see that we've dropped a little bit. The blade's stretching. I have to keep an eye on this meter all the time. Hit it again. I've got to figure out where that bolt fell out of. I don't know exactly where that bolt fell out of, but I think I've got an idea because my blade continues to spin. Okay, shut the mill down. Typically when you shut the mill down, the clutch disengages and it stops spinning. It's not stopping. So this little bolt may have something to do with that. Greasy rag, sanding sponge. I like to sand off any of that rust that might be on the surface of my guide right here. Make sure that's in good shape. We're just about ready to start cutting. We've got to lower down the loader deck arms real quick and we've got to take the jack and we're going to level this critter up. You can't really tell, but it's leaning down the hill down that way. And I'll show you how it's all jacked up and leveled real quick. The mule comes with a stainless steel handle. That handle typically lives right here. It just stays there, but it's for our jack. So it's what raises everything up. We're gonna go ahead and raise that guy up. We need to bring the mill up this way. So we'll just stick our jack in place. Maybe. <laughs> Up we go. Give her one more. Uh, uh, it's not easy. Come on, baby. What are we doing? What are we fighting against? We're fighting against something here. That's what we're fighting. We're fighting another jack. You'll hurt your back on this. All right, let's try again. Gosh, that's hard to do. Need a hydraulic jack on this thing. Ah, come on, baby. Come on. Ugh. What in the world? What are we fighting against here, bud? There we go. Now we're talking. So we'll take our rod, stow it away. Where it lives, it stays there even when we transport. Now we've got to get these arms laid down. Let's talk about this. Guys, all these logs are lined up. As I look at the logs and I look down the hill, let's both do this at the same time here. As I look at the logs and I look down the hill and I think to myself, dude, you put the biggest log at the top of the hill. The hardest one to roll. The one that's going to roll the fastest down and knock the mill in the river is at the top of the hill. <sighs> We've got logs in here that will not make any lumber. I'll show you that too. So the mill is here, okay? There, facing that way. The logs are that way. What do you see? The mill's this way. The logs should be this way. 
I don't know what kind of left-handed dude put these logs down here, but <laughs> I'm picking on you right now. So all these logs from about this point that way are good. There's one good one there. This is worthless, useless firewood. This is good. This is okay. It's got a twist in it. I wasn't here to cut the logs. They cut the logs. This is straight enough. This is persimmon. We can get something out of it. This is firewood. This will make dunnage for stacking wood. This will make dunnage for stacking wood. And this is persimmon. However, it is has a dog leg in it. In other words, it kicks up right there. So this is firewood. This is firewood. This is firewood. Got to know what you're doing when you're getting ready for your sawmill guy to come. And uh, <laughs> we're gonna run into trouble here. So what's gonna happen is as we roll these eight foot logs up to the mill, they're not gonna line up properly. And I'm gonna have to take a small tractor or the log ox and pull and push them into position where they need to be. The first log that's laying here is not going to go on the mill. It's going in the firewood pile. So we got to cut that in two and get it the heck out of the way. <laughs> this is old man grumpy Josh griping. <laughs> All right, we got to get these loader arms down. And in order to do that, I'm going to fire the mill and move them. Contact. Come on, buddy. There we go. So our first log is firewood. Let's get it out of the way. We might have to cut it in too. Once again, not on my property. Don't have my chainsaw, chaps. Firewood piece number one. Take our log ox. Drag this guy out of the way. Yeah, this is the top of a tree. This is garbage. Bite it, baby. There you go. Now you're going to understand why this log pile is, in the, is, is positioned completely wrong for the job that we're doing. So every single log on this log pile, every log out here is going to have to be moved. Every one of them is going to have to either be moved that way or that way. So I'll have to drag this one this way. There we go. Come on, buddy. That's meal. Hey, it's Tater. Tater's flat. In case you guys forgot, this is Tater. <laughs> Tater's new home is right here and Tater's been fixed up a little bit. New bumpers, new tires. Nice, he's put a couple grand into Tater. Rad.
So the first bit that we ran here is dunnage and we got a one by and a two by let me show you exactly what we got this is red oak and as you can see as soon as we cut it it popped up that's what happens when you've got a bent piece of wood or a bent log the stress of that log will cause the log to misshapen and i knew that was going to happen with this one so this is only good for dunnage which is something that's important anyway so we'll cut this into this is an eight footer and an eight footer we'll cut it into four four foot pieces and we'll lay it out here and that's where we'll offload all the lumber until we get the tractor down here with the pallet forks cool four feet ish doesn't have to be perfect draw a little line right there make sure i'm not going to hit anything on the mill like a hydraulic line about right there go ahead and put the husqvarna power rack back to work Here we go. That's all dunnage. Now, we'll see you guys first thing in the morning when we're ready to start rocking and rolling on the mill. Bam, it is day two guys and as you can see, got started I milled up about three more logs yesterday got a helper today this is Nate Nate's a college student getting a business degree at UNC Wilmington so congrats on that dude thank you we're gonna go ahead and time lapse this and you guys will get to see us just run through some lumber so we'll have several cameras going and having some fun we'll show you the results of all of this in just a minute on the sawmill guys there's a specific line here that we don't overfill our fuel if we do this has a fuel injection system with a return fuel line and it will damage it if we overfill the fuel tank so it's a little cumbersome to fill up but we get her done fuel injected so i don't have to use non-ethanol fuel but i still do Fine. let's fire it up contact
All right, guys, remember when I told you this stack was all misaligned? It would have been better to pile them all up on top of each other, but now we're gonna have to push them this way and push them that way. Anyway, we gotta push them all down this way and then we're gonna have to push them all that way. We do have fun. <laughs> so I wondered why everybody all of a sudden just showed up down here at the river. It turns out there are three senoritos out there on the water. Thank you. <laughs> We're almost three quarters of the way done. We've got big stuff left and you can see what we're milling up right here. These are for plant beds. I'll get you some footage of me building my plant beds right now. These will be two by 12s. Okay, two by 12s for building raised beds. Mr. Tony up here wanted some raised beds. So he saw mine on YouTube and said, man, I gotta have that. This is what we got so far, guys. Nice big stack. These are two by eights, one by sixes, one by sixes, two by 12s, and more two by eights and one by eights. This is a one by eight. He can use these for fence boards and all of these can be used for building well that's fence boards all these can be used for building raised beds so also another two by eight right there lots of lumber out of this stack right here but gosh it's a job What? What? The stack is gone. And we're out of blades and there's tractors everywhere. <laughs> oh man. Nate, tell me. Is this rough? This one. Is it a little rough? A little rough. Look at this stack of lumber we got here, guys. Look at all of this. All this is gonna be for raised beds for my friend Tony. That is super awesome. I tell you what. I swear by that wood miser sawmill that thing is an absolute beast super reliable today it didn't hiccup one time it did fantastic um nate is tired of picking up two by 12s right that's the truth <laughs> um, but guys we had a great time i had a great time what do you think i had a good time yeah Fine. it's a good time nate's got to go look at a fishing boat i'm all out of sawmill blades i'm all out of fuel and we're all out of time, guys. So we will see you in the next Sawmill Sunday video as we mill up one final log over here, which is gonna be a live edge, beautiful black walnut. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today here on the Stony Ridge Farm, off the farm, down by the river. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you, Nate, for all your hard work. And there's one thing we do at the end of every video. What's that? Woo! Woo. Come on! Woo! <laughs>
<laughs> I wore him out, guys. <laughs> Take care. Have a wonderful day. Woo! Come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be, Stony Ridge. Now, Tony has a neighbor, and his neighbor's name is John. And John has a pool and a pond, and he lets me swim in the pond sometimes. Appreciate that, John. Oh, baby. Bing! Winner! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Thank you.